G'day folks and welcome to Tanto Monta. I have got the uh, the full seven turn scenario set up here. It's basically two main scenarios. It's a four turn scenario starting on turn four and the full campaign scenario starting on turn one. That's what I have here. Um, apparently, uh, during the first three turns, there are a lot of restrictions and limitations. So the first three turns are a bit on rails. Turn four opens up and it's a bit more free, but I want to have the full experience. I want to encounter all these uh, historical uh, limitations. So I've gone for the full campaign. What are we looking at here? Okay, we have got a lot, I'm going to be doing a lot of comparisons to Here I Stand. There are a lot more military forces on the board and there are more forces of more states uh, and kingdoms on the board. Uh, we've got up here Portugal. Now Portugal, he's, actually I'll, I'll start with on the left. The first player will be the Muslim player. Here they are here, green, shades of green. And they control sort of um, this, this air, southern Iberia, southern Spain around here. They control large parts of North Africa. Later in the game, you'll have uh, the Ottoman-Venetian War and we'll have some Ottoman forces. So what you see down here in this little box are those forces that may come in later on. Okay, so they've been dealt their starting hand. Um, they are yeah, ready to go. If we look up on the diplomacy track, they are at war with Portugal. So you can see at this stage in history, Portugal has captured Quetta. Now this was uh, a turning point. This is this the capture of Quetta marked the beginning of that European age of discovery. Uh, it it set Portugal on this course of looking beyond their realm, of looking south southwest. You can see they've got these sort of they've captured these locations down the coast and they began to explore um, yeah along the the West African coast, triggering that sort of age of discovery. So that's Port that, that, that's, uh, that's uh, the Muslim player. They've got sort of a couple of factions they're managing, green. Um, what I'll also do is show you how we're starting. So everything is set up. Uh, there is no diplomacy on turn one, um, but we will, cards have been dealt and the Muslim player had a pretty average hand. They have their home cards and that's what they were dealt. Four, three, three, two. Now of these, they get to select some uh, headline cards to play. They must play a mandatory event. So they figure, okay, well, I'll, I'll get that out as a headline event. I have to play it at some stage. I may as well play it as a headline so I don't have to worry about it having to play it later on. And because they don't care so much, so what happens in a headline event, and I should point out as well, still wrapping my head around the rules, during the headline phase, you basically pick two cards. Um, you pick the card you want to play, and you pick a card, a second card for its C, it's called a supporting card for its CP value. Players then get benefits based on who had the highest CP. So what the Muslim player here is saying, I don't really care about this card. I'm playing a low CP card, getting another low CP card in my hand, basically getting my two lowest CP cards out of my hand in this headline phase. Now, in the, when this is resolved, whoever played the highest support card, gains a VP, and then they execute their events. Second place, rolls a die. On a five or more, they gain a VP. Uh, <laughs> then they execute their event. Third place, just execute their event. Fourth place, doesn't execute their event, but they can move any place influence marker on a minor power up or down. Okay, I'm not sure what happens if this is a mandatory event. Because this, this is basically, it has to happen. So, um, hmm, what happens? Already, first step, I'm not sure what happens here. I'm intrigued. I will check that out, okay? What happens if you play a mandatory event that isn't resolved? In any case, the Muslim player doesn't care if, uh, if that comes off or not. I would think that this, this must be played. Uh, I'll find that out later on. 
Okay, so the Portuguese, as I said, they are in, they've actually control um, two, two kingdoms uh, or, or states in effect. They control the kingdom of Portugal and they control these kind of light, kind of hard to see, very hard to see in fact. Even I know they're there, they're hard to see. These kind of uh, forces scattered in the kingdom of Castile. So the light blue scattered around there. They also control those. Uh, they are called, sorry, the Beltrajenos. Okay. For their headline car, they're going to try to play Joana la Beltrajena. She, this car, this event will enable the Portuguese player to basically roll a dice for every Beltrajenos home space. Boom, boom, boom. There's a few of them around that is not occupied by any force. And on a roll six, they add a regular. On a five, they add a militia. They re-roll if it's a four. On a one to three, nothing happens. Then they take four CP worth of actions. Or they can just take a VP if the Beltrajenos control a home key, which they do. So they've got a choice here, either adding some forces, militia, or a quick victory point. And they're pretty keen for that to happen. So they're playing a three op card, okay? They don't want to play this. So the Portuguese are allied with the French. So they don't really want to reduce the loyalty. They want the French to do well for reasons which I'll cover in a moment. Okay, so you've got the Portuguese Beltrianos in this vicinity, all right? Western Iberian Peninsula. Then you've got the Spanish, the uh, Isabella of Castile who is here with our Castilian army. Uh, you've got Ferdinand of Aragon, who is in Zaragoza, here with his Aragonian army. And they are fighting a two-front war. They are at war with the Portuguese and the Bella, I just forgot their name already, Bella Trajanos. And they're at war with the French and these other dudes out here, uh, Ca Catalonians, okay? I'm gonna get this all mixed up. But so the Aragonians are at war with the Catalonians and the French. Okay, so they're fighting this, this multi-fronted war really. And, all right, they also have to manage two, I think two hands of cards. So you, uh, they have the largest hand of cards, but you've got Isabella of uh, Castile's hand and Ferdinand's hand. And they've picked the crown of Aragon. This is basically letting them, because they're really fighting this war, they, I think, are going to recruit. Add four land units, okay? And again, they want this to happen, so they're playing this card three. They actually had, they've got the largest hands of cards, and they had the best, they had the best draw. A lot of uh, fours and fives, a really nice hand of cards for both Isabella and um, Ferdinand. It was a tough choice but they have settled on the Crown of Aragorn just to recruit, just to get some more land forces out. First turn, that's what they're going for for their headline. Okay. Finally, we've got the French, and the French also control, so the French up in France up here, they also control the Catalonians, and at the start of the game, they have an alliance with the papacy. But they also have this war against Burgundy, which comes out as part of setup. So they've got quite a large force here under Louis XI, and they're fighting against seven independent regulars. And when they win this war, they gain a VP. Now the French were very <laughs> impressed. They actually got lucky. So basically at the start of each turn, um, the Spanish roll a dice for each of the areas with these little flags that they control. And on a certain die roll, uh, they draw another card. They succeeded, I think, once or twice. The French then roll and they get an extra card based on noble houses and loyalty of noble houses and they also drew an extra card based on that and wow their hand was pretty cool italian renaissance they start with papal bill they start with power of the crown they also drew city-state rebels which is pretty impressive war reparation uh, preparations which pays for the cost of war but they've decided to play council of the principality the french player draws a card and takes, this is one of their home cards, and takes three CP of actions, or add a cavalry, add a regular, add three militias to an unbesieged home spaces. So they're gonna wait and see what happens, and then maybe they'll just draw a replacement card and take three CP, which is pretty impressive, 
or they'll just add some recruits. And they want this to happen. So they're playing City State Rebels. All right, so City State Rebels basically lets you force an uprising from an unbesieged um, key uh, fortified space that is not current, that is not controlled by its home power. There aren't many of those. There's uh, a Scylla out here. There's Mazagan out here. There aren't many at the start of the game. And so I figured, do the French really want, they're allied with Portugal. <laughs> do they really want to be taking Portuguese fortresses on the west coast of Africa, North Africa from them? Um, what else is there? I don't think there's much else. Uh, bearing in mind this is this is they, they control uh, Catalonia. Uh, I don't know. I don't think there is. So they figure, well, we may as well play this big five op card because all their other cards are really good. We want this to happen, so we don't want to play a two, we don't want to play ambush. Consolidation of power, my thinking is what I'm gonna try and do, the French strategy is going to try to push the lo loyalty of their noble houses higher. Start of each turn, they're drawing cards, they're rolling dice based on the loyalty of these noble houses. So if they roll, I think it's equal to or less than the loyalty, they draw an extra card. At the start of the game, these are all on one, one, I can't say the last one, 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 one. So they want to increase that loyalty um, to increase their chances of drawing additional cards. Additional cards means additional actions. Additional actions mean they're doing more. So they're going to try to invest in this consolidation of power early on. Very lucky that they drew this. Um, they've got Italian Renaissance, two CP worth of actions, then draw a card from the deck. Um, they've got Power of the Crown, advance the loyalty of a noble house. So they're going to be doing this. They're going to be advancing the loyalties of those houses. That's going to be their, their main priority. And they're going to kick things off, as I said, by, well, I know what's going to happen. They're going to win, get a victory point, and then enable the Council of the Principality to... I think they'll take a card, well look, take a card and draw 3 CP. They'll probably play it quite peacefully. Peaceful French. Engaging in sort of domestic diplomacy with the noble houses of France to gain their loyalty. And then we'll go to war later on. We'll let the Portuguese, and look, Catalonia could be active. Catalonia is not that strong. This is the French controlled faction um, in the Kingdom of Aragon area. Um, the French also control the papacy. Okay, so we've got the papacy over here. Uh, these are the French and Catalonian fleets in the Gulf of Lyon. There are not a lot of, well, there are some fleets, but they're all kind of in harbour. They're hard to see. Um, there's, definitely, there's definitely some tension between Portugal and the, the Spanish. They're right on each other's doorsteps. The French and Spanish have a bit of a buffer. Okay, so there's, you know, uh, Pyrenees, Catalonians are kind of there, but they're not directly butting heads. You've got the Navarrese, um, other stuff going on. And then you've got the Muslims who are at war uh, with the Portuguese, but it's kind of, uh, I don't know, they seem to be, I don't know, I don't know how aggressive they're going to be. They, they also, I will point out, they, they drew a, they've got their home cards, which can help them recruit. I don't know, I think the, the Muslims are probably gonna play it a bit cautiously and just try and, try and be a, a bystander, I guess, in this, this Portuguese-Spanish war and see if they can just take advantage. Um, yeah, look, and, and that's, that's, before I get into all these other details on exploration and piracy. That's just kind of my initial thinking of what's going to happen based on the headline events. Uh, okay, so I've gone through everything. You'll notice also this is the, this is the La Mesta token. It starts in Guadalajara. Uh, it gets moved each turn. Uh, normally each turn there's a diplomacy phase that's skipped on turn one. Um, that's something to learn as well. We've got our diplomatic track set up here. Ah, what else? We don't worry about the marriage display yet. That'll come in at turn two or turn three based on event plays. Um, yeah. 
where did you go? So there's so other aspects of the map. Okay, we've got Cape uh, Boyador over here. We've got the sort of uh, exploration discovery uh, section down here. Um, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Turn track, Vitra Point track, um, noble houses at the top. Yeah, time to uh, time to I guess start rolling and see how we go. And uh, it'll be slow going because there's about a sixty odd page rule for me to. Not just read, but be versed in. Alright folks, thanks for watching, and take care.